Nick here for Introduction to Crochet. Today I'm going to give you a very brief overview on the different kinds of yarns that you can get and on crochet hooks. And then I'm going to teach you the first three stitches that you'll need to start cro crocheting yourself. So first we're going to talk a little bit about yarn. Now there are generally eight different weights of yarn and the type of weight you need depends on the project you're doing. So they range from zero to one, which are these very, very fine. So this is like a very fine, this is a one, I think, um, yarns. So very, very fine. This is good for lace. This is good for like detailing stuff, but this is really tricky to work with. So I wouldn't start with zeros, ones, twos. Um, when you start kind of a project for yourself, you can then get into the threes. So this is a three that talks about how many strands of yarn are in, are, are woven together. So that's a three, then you get four. Now four is what I recommend starting with. This is um, sometimes called a worsted weight. Um, it's, it's really easy to work with. It's not too thick but it's thick enough that you can practice yarn management with it. So this is a four. You can get this almost anywhere. Um, I have some kind of different yarns here too. This is a five, but the problem with this yarn is it frays really easily. So I wouldn't start here either, um, unless you're used to crocheting or if you do loom knitting or regular needle knitting. Um, and then this is a six. This is a super bulky. There is a seven, which is thicker than this. It's kind of called a jumbo um, yarn. And that's good if you want to make a blanket really fast. But again, I would kind of ease into it and start with a four, which is what I'm going to practice on today for you. The way that you can tell what kind and what size yarn you're getting is you're going to get um, a wrapping around every skein of yarn that you get. I mean, I've got one here. And it's going to tell you about the yarn. So see how this one says that it's a four? It tells you what size hook would be the best to use or what size knitting needles would be the best to use and how many stitches it's going to take to get a nice 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square. So can you see that? So or a four inch by four inch square. So it'll give you all of that information on the label. So this is for a four and it says that um, one of the best hooks to use, the smallest you want to use is the six, and then the, but they recommend an eye. So now that we sort of talked about yarn and what I recommend looking for that four, let's talk about hooks. So you can pick up crochet hooks in almost any craft store. You can pick them up at Walmart or you can get them on Amazon. I recommend getting a kit that kind of has from like F or G size hooks. That's what we kind of use in the United States for them. There's also by millimeters. So um, you kind of want something that's like an F, a G, an H, and an I for a four. Crochet hooks, however, do come in kits where you can get them very tiny. So this is one of the smallest hooks that I own. This is good for the lace. And this is just a six and it's called, a, it's a 1.80 millimeter hook. It's very good if you're doing tiny, fine, fine work, but it takes a lot of practice. Crochet hooks also come in big sizes. So this is an L or an eight millimeter hook. And this is again, good for, you know, your bulkier yarns. So like that would be good for this kind of yarn. Um, I have a nine at home, which is good for, for if you're doing multiple strands of yarn as well. But for today's practice and what I'm gonna teach you, I am gonna use, I personally like using an H or a five millimeter hook for um, four weight yarn. You can use an eye. The big difference that you're gonna get is the size of your stitches. I tend to like things a little bit tighter, so I like the size hook. If you want them a little looser, it might be better to work with an eye. So that's just something to think about. An eye is a 5.5 millimeter hook, so if that's something you're looking at, that's kind of what I would recommend for that. An H or an eye is usually pretty good for this weight yarn for my four weight. And this you can get anywhere too. Walmart, all the hobby stores, Amazon, you know, finding yarn. Um, if you are new at crochet, I recommend getting kind of the plainer yarn. There's, they sell some really pretty yarn that has a lot of colors and a lot of texture, and it's really difficult to work with if you're not used to it. 
So I would recommend stick to the plain stuff, get a couple projects under your belt, and then see how it goes. All right, let's get started crocheting. Okay, to start your crochet, we're going to do a chain. And what a chain is, is basically it's a bunch of little chains um, of your yarn, and you build that into your project. So all of your, your first row stitches are going to go into your chain, and then you can go from there. To start your chain, you're going to make a slip knot. And so you're going to take the working end of the yarn. This is called the working end, so it's the, the end of it. And you're going to make the slip knot that way. Now, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to do it with my left hand. So I'm going to take the yarn and I'm going to wrap the working end around my index, index finger twice. So I have one loop, two loops. Okay. I'm going to take this back loop and I'm going to put it in front, not off my finger. So it's still on in front of that first loop. So now that first loop is the back loop. Now I'm going to take this loop and I'm going to pull it off my finger entirely. And that is your slip knot. And so you can tighten it on your finger. And the nice thing about this is if I look at it and go, I have too much tail here, I don't like it, or I need more tail, I can just pop it off and I don't have any knots. So we'll do that again. So you wrap the working end of your yarn around your index finger once, twice. You take that back loop and do not take it off. Just put it in front of this other loop. Now I'm going to take the loop that's now in back, and that's the one that's going to come. Oh, that's going to come off my finger. Oh, that didn't work at all. So let's try that again. So wrap it once, twice. This comes in front, and now it comes off, and I can pull to tighten. So now I've got this little hoop. This is where my crochet hook is going to go in, and I can tighten it from there. Now. Here's a tip. Do not tighten too much. It might be something you have to learn the diff how to keep it from being too loose or too tight. When I first started crocheting, I did everything really, really tight and it was ridiculously hard to go in. I was making um, crochet stitches that were just too tight to work with. So it's something you're going to have to practice. It's part of yarn management. Um, but just be aware. Don't make them too loose. Don't make them too tight. For your first couple of times, it might be better to be a little looser, but you can kind of play around with that. All right, one of the things I like to do when I crochet is I like to wrap the yarn around my index finger because it makes it taut so that I can work with this and I'm not having droopy yarn and then I'm confused on what I'm doing. Okay, so a chain stitch is actually really easy. You take your hook and you wrap it under. So this is also called yarn over. So if you ever see Y-O, or the phrase yarn over in a pattern, that's basically what it is. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pull it through here. And that is my first chain. So let's see if we can get, that is a chain. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna take this hook, I'm gonna yarn over, and I'm going to pull it through the loop that's on the hook. So I've got two, I'm gonna do it again. Three. So can you see one, two, three? We'll do, I think we'll do 10 just so you can see. So that's three, four. And do you see how I'm not tightening them very much? Because I could do it where it's really tight on the hook and I pull through and it's very tight. So the difference, see how they, these ones sort of have some give? This one's super tight. So I don't want that. So I'm just going to pull that one out lightly. So that's four, one, two, three, four. We'll go five. So yarn over six and pull through. Yarn over seven and pull through. Yarn over eight and pull through. Yarn over nine and pull through. And yarn over 10 and pull through. And this is the starting chain. So it looks sort of like a braid or like on this side you can see how it's sort of a chain where you've got back loops here and you've got your front loops here that sort of look like a braid. 
So that is how you do your starting chain. Every crochet project in some way or another, well, not every, maybe 99% of them though, will have a chain of some kind. Sometimes you'll go back through the beginning. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back this way. Okay, so I have 10 chains on ready to be crocheted. So I'm going to single crochet now, but I, I wanna make 10 single crochet stitches and you never go into the chain right next to your hook. So I'm actually gonna make another chain. So that's 11. Now I'm gonna skip him and I'm gonna start crocheting into the hook, the chain behind him. So you're gonna take your hook and you're going to go into, so it looks like a V. Do you see how the chain stitch sort of looks like a V? You're gonna go into both of those. So they're both gonna be on your hook. And sometimes it can be a little tri tricky if your chains are too tight, which is why I say, Loosen, loosen, loosen. So now I've got both of my chain stitches or the pieces of yarn on the hook and I'm gonna yarn over and go through the chain. Okay, I've got two loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over again and go through both of them. And this is a single crochet. So this is how it's gonna look. We're gonna do it again. So I'm gonna go into this chain. I'm gonna go between so that I've picked up both of the sides of the V. I'm gonna go through, I've got two loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and go through both of them. So see, that is two, crochet, two single crochets. Same thing, I'm gonna go in. So I've got both of the V on my hook. I'm gonna yarn through that, yarn over and pull through that. I've got two loops and I'm gonna go through. So can you see? And they sort of look like they've got a tiny little V in them already. That's kind of how I can tell. It's the shortest stitch. So I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna yarn over. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through both. And when you see the double crochet, you'll see really how this stitch is much shorter than a double crochet. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna yarn over and pull through, and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through, okay? I'm gonna go in, I've got both of them on my hook, see, one, two. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through that stitch, just the chain stitch. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through the other two. Okay, so one of the ways I like to do this when I'm doing going into the stitch is you can sort of see the back loop. I like to use that as my guide. I'm going to go between that back loop on the chain and the front loop on the chain. Oop. See, that one's a little tight, so it's giving me grief. And I'm going to, and that's how I can tell that I've gotten the chain on my hook. And I'm going to go through. I'll tell you, it, get, it tries to twist on you, so be careful to keep it as straight as you can. Okay, so I'm going to go through. I'm going to chain or pull through, yarn over, and then yarn over and pull through the other two. All right, I'm going into my chain in between the back and the two pieces in the front, the two V. I'm going to yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through both of them. And then the last one here, I'm gonna go through. So I've got the two on the top. I'm gonna pull through that. And then I have, oh, and it's trying to twist a little bit, a row of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten with my little twist at the end, with my turn at the end. So this is my row of single crochet. So 
now we are going to go back and do a row of double crochet. Let me move that out. We're going to flip it, okay? And because we're going to go back this way. And you can see at the top, you see all the little V's that I have going on here? There's 10 of them. Those are what we're going to work into. But we're going to do a double crochet. Now, double crochet is taller than single crochet. So single crochet, see, it's not a huge stitch. Double crochet is bigger than that. So we're going to have to do something called a turning chain. Now, I like to do them when I'm going this direction still. Because if we were to just go back through, we'd have to skip this stitch. We always skip the stitch next to the, chain, the hook. So that would give us nine stitches and it would just look not right. It wouldn't be as tall and it would give us give our work some weird dimension. So we don't want to do that. We need to make it tall enough. If you were doing a double crochet from the chain, you would skip your first three chain stitches from your hook. Okay, so if you're doing double crochet and you want to do 10 from the start, you're going to do 13 chains. A lot of crochet patterns will tell you how many chains to do so that you know what to skip. They'll kind of walk you through it, but that's just something to remember. But since we're not doing that, we're going into the row of single crochet. We are going to chain three, one, two, three, turning chain. And this chain counts as the first double crochet. So we're going to skip this single crochet that's right next to our chain because that's where this one's going to go. So it kind of takes this place. And we're going to work into the second single crochet right here. Now, to double to single crochet, you would just go into the stitch. We're not going to do that. We want it to be taller, so we're going to add a little bit by wrapping our working yarn around our hook. So now I've got two kind of loops on that. Then I'm going to go into the single crochet. And like with the chain, I'm going to go so that I'm in the V. So I'm going under both of these pieces. So it's going to be right here. And then I'm going to yarn over. Now I have three pieces on my hook. My hook. So I'm going to yarn over again, and I'm going to go through one, two of them. And then I'm going to yarn over one more time and go through that last one. And see how it's taller? So it's taller than the stitches underneath. See? So it looks like that. So you wrap it. You go into these two below. Oh, this yarn is in the way. So you're going to go into these two. So wrap into, pull one, pull yarn over and pull through. So I've got three. I'm going through the two. Then I'm going through the last two. Okay? So yarn over, always yarn over for double. And I sometimes you can tell where the stitch is going to be because there's like little gaps. See, there's a little gap right there. So that's where I'm going to go into, and I'm going to pull through. So I've got three, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So I've got four stitches because remember this turning chain counts. So one, two, three, four. Yarn over. Go into the single crochet and pull through, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So yarn over, go into this one right here and pull through, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Let me get some more yarn here. Okay. So yarn over, go into the stitch, pull through yarn, yarn over and pull through. I've got three. I'm going to go through two of them. And then I'm going to go through the next two. So yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. I've got three. Yarn over and pull through. And then pull through. Okay. So we'll do yarn over and go in. So I've got three. I'm going to go through two. And then I'm going to go through two. Now this last, so let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to do my last one in what was the turning chain for my single crochet row. So this is always a little tricky. You can see the chain there. So that's what I want to make sure I go into. Oh, but I did not yarn over, so yarn over, go
go through, pull, yarn over, and I'm starting to have my edges, okay? So that is a double crochet. So it's a row of single crochet, which you can see they're sort of short and they look like they have a little tabletop. And then your double crochet, which is taller and kind of, it, I don't know, it looks to me like it's, it's more, it's a bunch of yarn kind of twisted together, but that's how a double crochet is gonna look. Now, if I wanted to do another row of single, I would chain one, turn, and go into the double crochets, but this would count. So I would go here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh oh, do I run out of stitches? Nope, I'm gonna use this turning chain as my last, my 10th stitch, and I'm gonna go on the top to this right up here, and I'm gonna go 10. So a row of single, a row of double, and a row of single. So this is how you get started doing crochet. I recommend just practicing those three stitches, the chain, the single, and the double. Maybe just a piece like this, do a row of double, a row of single. Remember though, when you're turning to do your doubles, you wanna chain three. We always skip the stitch next to the hook because that's where our, the chain counts. And you always want to make sure you've got both stitches on your hook. So that's two, three, four, five. And the more you practice, the better you'll get and you can start doing other things. If you liked this video and are, in, and are interested in doing more, click subscribe and we'll see if we can get another crochet video out. All right, thanks everybody.